Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimler's History. Now, we've been going through Unit 1 of the AP Government Curriculum, and in this video, it's time to talk about the debate between Federalist 10 and Brutus 1 with respect to the power of the government. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, well, then let's get to it. Okay, so in this video, here's what we're aiming to do. Explain how Federalist and Anti-Federalist views on central government and democracy are reflected in U.S. foundational documents. Now, I've got two videos on Federalist 10 and Brutus 1, respectively. You can watch those if you want to know the details about the contents of those documents. But for now, we're just going to consider the idea ideological debate between the two over the value of democracy and liberty. Now, the main idea of the debate was about majority rule versus minority rights. And when I say minority here, don't get confused. I don't mean ethnic minorities. I mean the opposite of majority. And in the context of this debate, we're talking about regional and economic majorities and minorities. And there were some very pressing questions being debated. For example, how could they ensure that small landowners, of which there were many, would not impose a devastating tax burden on the wealthy elite, of which there were very few? Or how could they ensure that agriculture cultural interest wouldn't dominate industrial interest, or vice versa, etc., etc. Now, the two main groups fighting about these kinds of things during the ratification debates for the Constitution were the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. The Federalists included folks like Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay, and they were arguing for more centralized power in the federal government, which is what we'd get if the Constitution was ratified. The Anti-Federalists, on the other hand, included folks like Patrick Henry and George Mason, and they argued against the ratification of the Constitution because they thought that the current government in which power was invested in the state was just fine, thank you very much. So this debate over majority rule versus minority rights found its way into print, and both Federalists and Anti-Federalists published essays in New York newspapers which argued their respective perspectives. And these became known as the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers, and that's where we get our foundational documents, Federalist 10 and Brutus 1. So let's start with Federalist 10. The main argument in this document is concerning the, quote, mischief of factions. And factions are just groups of people who believe that their interests are more important than any other interests. And so the problem is this, if the majority always prevailed, then the minority would never be represented. However, if too many protections were provided to the minority, then the common good would never prevail. So the solution to these problems in Federalist 10 is to create a Republican-style government, which is what the Constitution provided. Under a Republican government, not to be confused with the Republican Party, different thing altogether. Anyway, under a Republican government, and then combined with the sheer size and population of the United States, there would be so many factions, so many competing interests, that they would have to debate and compromise in order to get any laws passed. And Therefore, majority rule and minority rights upheld. But the Anti-Federalist and Brutus I were uh, not impressed with those arguments. They said that history had never seen a Republican-style government govern a population in a landmass as large as the United States. And because of the Necessary and Proper Clause and the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution, a powerful central government would render state governments unnecessary, thus squashing the interests of the states. Therefore, if liberty is to be maintained in our fair country, the Constitution, with all its centralized power, should not be ratified. Now, the Anti-Federalist papers were a lot less organized than the Federalist Papers were. The Anti-Federalists just kind of published their essays willy-nilly without much concerted effort, and so you've got lots of different authors contributing to this canon of anti-constitutional literature. For example, in addition to Brutus I, you have letters from the Federal Farmer, which Hamilton acknowledged to be the most cogent of the Anti-Federalist writers. Now, whoever wrote these said in the first one, the plan of government now proposed is evidently calculated totally to change, in time, our condition as a people. Instead of being 13 republics under a federal head, it is clearly designed to make us one consolidated government. So, it's just another example of the same argument being made in Brutus 1. Now, of course, ultimately, it was the Federalists who won that debate, and that means we got ourselves a new governing document in the Constitution of the United States. But alas, that will have to wait for another video. Well, all right, that's what you need to know about Unit 1, Topic 3 of the AP Government Curriculum. Click right over here, grab a review packet if you want help getting an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in May. If you want me to keep making these videos for you, then let me know by subscribing. Heimler out.